Good morning, this is Robin Norgren. I'm your host for Deeply Rooted TV. And you can find all the work that I do under www.robinnorgren.com. Today's walking meditation, the theme is, it was an epiphany. Growing up, we lived with a mother and a father who were pretty self-sufficient on their own. They did things for the most part separately. My dad was very strong-willed. My mom was strong-willed as well, but she acquiesced in a lot of ways to him because he was such a strong personality. And so, when they ended up separating, Her will came to the forefront for the most part because she was a single mother of four kids. And so self-sufficiency was the rule of thumb in our house. We did not need people. We did not need relationships. it seemed I was built a little differently than the other three siblings. I found myself wanting to be connected. And then we moved my teenage years to Arizona. And so, in both situations, I felt myself to be the outsider. So, as much as I wanted community, I also had this self awareness that when I was being minimized in a community, I want no part in that community. <laughs> and so I would find communities like churches, try to become involved, then find for some reason I wasn't gelling. Um, if I was single, it was because I wasn't married. If I was married, it was because I needed to let my husband do more of the the leading or coordinating or working, whatever word you'd like to call it. And then the same would happen when I'd move into other communities like Montessori communities or school systems. The more I wanted to have community, which also in my mind meant diversity and openness to hear other thoughts, desires, opinions, and a diversity of thought as well as actions, I realized that community didn't necessarily allow for that, that that was a revelation to have community where diversity of thought was welcome. 
so then I thought, well, maybe I just don't really want community. Or maybe I have something wrong with me that I think community should be able to support diversity. And this has been an ongoing uh, thesis over the last, I want to say, 20 years of my life. Because being a military wife, I also had to contend with moving quite a few times. And I've learned it goes one of two ways. Either people... have an openness of heart that allows you to come be a part of their community, even if it's just for a brief time of, say, six or seven months, or they want really no part of you because they don't want to deal with the sadness of when you move away. So... where I've actually been in one place I almost want to say the longest I've ever been it's going on four years and we came back to our I guess for lack of a better way to say it our home base which is Arizona and I still find myself looking that community that welcomes diversity. Now, what is ironic about all of this is my sister now lives in Sri Lanka and she starts to tell me about this place that she lives and she starts to describe it to me and it almost sounds too good to be true right good morning because it's the very thing that I've been looking for all these years and then she said these words she's like she says you know I wasn't looking for this I really feel community. <laughs> so, I'm thinking about the theme for today that I have an epiphany. And I guess I'm sharing her epiphany so that I can struggle with the epiphany that I'm having. And it seems to be well first everyone defines community differently and I am starting to understand that the community that I'm looking for is uh, a community that you really have to work for like, it's not, for me, it's not instantaneous. Maybe some people are lucky enough to have been placed in families where community and acceptance, I guess maybe that might even be another way to say it, are just par for their course. So they might not understand what it means when you don't have that. Um... I go so far as to say, interestingly, I think that my grown kids struggle with it, though they haven't really articulated it yet, because they've gone out into the world and been so judged by the world's standards. 
that they've forgotten they have this place of community. That somehow they thought they needed to go out and find their way, yes. But at the same time as they're finding their way, let go of everything behind them. Yesterday I got a call from my ex-husband that his mother died and at first I didn't know what to think other than obviously the remorse of it for him because though we were we are divorced there there is a friendship about within within us and We've known each other 32 years, and there is something about growing up with someone, seeing them evolve over the years, seeing how they parent and co-parent with you, and you really understand all of life is such an evolution, isn't it? That you're learning and growing. Now, how you're responding to the learning and growing is another thing. That's your choice, but you really are different. So as I think about my epiphany for even community, it even leaves room for, for that, for, for how true community works, even in divorce, and how you can notice that it's not a good fit, but It's not, I, I erase you from my mind forever. <laughs> we will never speak of it. Because I chuckle as I say, that is kind of how, well, it's not kind of, it is. How my parents divorced when my mom moved the four of us to Arizona from Michigan when I was 14, we never saw our dad again. We never saw the family again. Not hers, not mine. I mean, not hers, not my dad's. We just were just four people, plus my mom, unto ourselves, an island in a strange state. And at that point, I was 14 years old, going into high school, and it was just completely ripped from me to find my way. So Epiphany, my Epiphany is that the way in which you want community, it takes patience. You can settle for what would be to you a counterfeit way of being in community, or you can choose to wait and allow God to attract the community that you're looking for to you, but it takes patience, and it's so very frustrating at times, and I still wouldn't say it's the way I would have dreamt it. but I find it's there nonetheless. Some of the community is online. Some of the community is through my daughter. Some of the community is in my own home with my family. A big piece of community is, is in Sri Lanka with my sister. And then the extension of the community that she's invited me into is there. People that I haven't met in person. But just know through her spirit that I am somehow connected in the collective.
So I invite you today to think about community and also to think about an epiphany, either about community or about what you're experiencing in your life today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make the Lord, may the Lord fa- make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be merciful to you and grant you peace.